it is a Nyx OS revisiting day. Nyx, I talked about uh, several months back. Actually, it might be about a year now. And it's been a while since I revisited it. And I love that distro just because it's so unique and it's very reproducible. Where since I'm wiping out my system so often and just kind of reloading things, I love Nyx because it should just put everything back to how I have it. Especially with me having like my own home folder as a separate partition. We should be able to reload it today. So that's what today's stream is going to be all about. It's going to be Nyx. Should be fun. Uh, should be a blast. We'll see how it turns out in the long run. I'm going to go to their website. We'll get downloading the stable release, whatever it's on now. And then go to GitHub, look at my configuration and see what needs to be changed and updated because uh, probably a few things have changed since the last iteration uh so let's let's check out old nix os today and we'll probably be wiping out Arctic. so i do have the two screens here now so we'll see how that works out uh where i didn't before Yes, thanks. I hope you had a good Christmas as well. Mine was fantastic. Pretty low key this year. I like to keep it that way if I can. <laughs> so I like it. Um, uh, let's see what we have in Nix OS. See what we got for a download. What do we got now? Multi-user, single user, current versions 2.9. That's just the package manager. We want the distribution. And I kind of want to just go with this one, uh, the minimal ISO image, and it should be fine. You have to run the installer from console. I forgot all about this. So much I forget. Well, how do you set up secure boot? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how to install the thing right now. Um, it has been a bit. All right. Plug in drive, USB, blah, 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 ISO uh graphic one we're not gonna do manual can be installed on ufi which is what we'll be using log in automatically as nixos as the user account so you can use sudo without a password sudo dash i and set font all that looks good uh the question i have i might unplug this monitor before we do anything there so we get the proper screens i'm worried about two screens taking over so take into account that uh, partitioning that should be fine oh that does make me so we're going to be doing everything manually uh lots of opportunities to screw this up but we'll see we already have the generate config and the configuration Nix file. We'll download our existing one and see how that looks. And this looks fine. Ooh, man. All right. So we're gonna go directly into the command line on the manual install. We're going to go the hard mode on this one. We're not going to use a GUI. I'm just kind of curious to see how this is going to work. I think we'll just do GitHub on the install. Uh, we could use like a Nix shell. Use dash P, I think, to grab the Git package. And then move forward with that. Uh, setting up this. This is just setting up the actual one. And then just do Nix OS dash install. I mean, that should be relatively easy i just wonder where i'm gonna put where's it gonna read the config.nix file at that's the thing i don't know uh so here's example commands look they even have a little walkthrough you're gonna do the make os blah 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 that's fine uh generate root dash mnt okay Nano, MNT, NixOS. So I think we just mount that whole thing and then we're just going to grab the git configuration.nix. Next up, let's look at our configuration file in Nix. Uh, let's go here. 
And before I forget, let me pull up chat on my other screen here so I can see what you guys are saying. Ooh. All right, there we go. Ooh. Let's see. NixOS repository. Is this going to be a video about MicroWin? No. We're going to save MicroWin for Thursday. We do need to revisit MicroWin. There's a lot of optimizations we have yet to make for MicroWin, but Thursday we'll do that. So the next stream, we'll get going on it. Oh, let's see. Where do we got Nix OS? It should be in here. I think I just did a PR for this not too long ago, updating the version number, I want to say. Uh, I just want to make sure everything's good here. Man, maybe... How many repositories do I have now? Ah, there it is. And most things should be in here. What's in my hardware config file? Ah, this is the file systems, which I think the UUIDs have changed. So we're gonna have to update our hardware.config. These haven't changed at all. Yeah, all this should be fine. It's just mainly updating the UUIDs for the root, the boot, and the home. Uh, oh, this is back when I was using volume groups with an LVM. I don't do that anymore. I mainly just do uh, standard. So, hmm. Hardware config looks pretty good. Let's look at our actual config. Uh, the thing I want to know the most about this one was, was there any packages I want to remove? Uh, everything here looks pretty good, but let's edit this direct because I feel like there's going to be some packages I've switched in that time frame. So here's NeoFetch, CLang. The cool thing about Nix too is this is what I install on every system. I don't have to go back and like, oh, did I install that? Windows, the gaming OS, Linux for chads. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better for myself there. That is so great, Khaled. Windows, the gaming OS, and uh, Linux for chads. Love it. Uh. <laughs> I'm not available 30 seconds later. Yeah, that is totally me. All right. Uh, having said that, let's see what we got. My custom uh, Nix here. Let me, let me just send you the link so you guys can see what I'm working off of. There you go. Little rocks. Uh, we did have Brave up here. Let's remove that. And I do need to reorder this. Um, do we have Florp? Let's check the NixOS packages. Because that will be the browser of choice. Let's go Florp. And there's Florp right there. Florp is the package name. We'll go Florp. Anything else changed? Well, that looks pretty good. All right. Um, well, that's wild. Okay. What oh, there's extra spaces in here. That's what's up. Okay, so that's all in line. And then we're going to do a git, uh, git pull of DWM. That should set it up all by itself. Uh, some gaming optimizations for it. All this is still relevant. Uh, you might need to look at this if you are using Wayland. We're not. And we'll be using Xorg. Using DWM as I always, always have. Special fonts for... This is for mainly terminal and console, I believe. And the rest looks pretty good. So I think we'll commit those changes. Just some simple updates. Oh, it won't load at all for you. Well, let's see. You know, that one dude says Florp may not work on NixOS. So, uh, let's see, you know, I'm always game for breaking something or trying something that's supposed to not work. Like I said, we'll see how it goes. DWM is old. Yeah, it is, but sometimes older is better. Like I said, if it ain't broke, why fix it? <laughs> Old is gold. Sometimes that's true. Especially if it's working good. I need antivirus for my Linux. 
I guess you could go clam AV. <laughs> Although I think Michael's probably just trolling. Uh, and usually any virus for Linux is done when you're using like a NAS or Linux share. And there's like Windows files hosted in a Linux share. Typically you scan it with clam AV and it does a pretty good job. Uh, for those that are mixing and matching a lot of OS stuff. Always very good. So this will be what we're using with the latest ones. Uh, we do have one PR. What's this? From Ubix. Added a couple of some groups back. Blah, blah, blah. Um, removal of description. Flat pack disk. EMU. KVM. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's actually not, not too bad. I like that change. We'll approve it. And squash and merge. Let's get going here with the config file. Let's uh let's first start downloading this, I think, actually. Did we create bootable? I think it's really just wiping some of this out and then just doing a Nix stash install, I think it was. Yeah, Nix OS dash install. Uh once we get that going. Do we need to do that Nix OS generate config? I don't think we do. If we look at the base right here, I think we can get away with just doing this. We'll do a Vim edit of our hardware config to update our UUID, uh, UUIDs. But other than that, I think we should be pretty solid. Uh, yeah, I do use YubiKey. Highly recommend YubiKeys. That's something YouTube you will see all over YouTube and all the YouTubers are right. You should be using a YubiKey. Oh, I did not enable home manager. Um, how should, how do I do that? Let's go home manager. That's one thing I wanted to look at uh, on this Nix OS install. Home manager is a system for managing user environment using the Nix package manager and other ways. Home manager lets you install software declaratively in your user profile rather than using a Nix environment. Manage dot files in the home directory of your user. Okay. It's many options. So installation as a user. So this one should be stored here. Do I need to install it before I run my config.nix? So maybe I do this post install. Should I do it post install? Do as a module. Okay. Here's the Nix module in, in, uh, template to use. Great. Home manager and then Nix OS. So this must be set. So we could just add this. So there's a config packages. So after our config packages, we'd add this line right here. Anything else I want to do here. And we'll, we'll add all this after the fact. I think we just kind of want to get the module in, right? Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see if we can't work through some of the issues I had with NixOS too. The advantage of a YubiKey over a key file in a USB drive, uh, the YubiKey actually has a touch sensor. So instead of just having a key file on a USB drive, which can be copied and put every other place, you got to have the physical hardware. You break the physical hardware, you can't get your stuff. And that's good and bad, double-edged sword. So maybe buy two UV keys. One as a backup in like a safe or something, and then one that can sit on like your keychain. Uh, so just think of it as a hardware dongle. That's That makes it to where even if someone gets your information, unless they steal the actual hardware, they can't get in. All right, you need a home manager, especially for doing that. Um, well, let's give it a whirl. Hmm. I think we'll just grab this, and I think we can just put it after the packages in config.nix, or should we do it in home.nix? Follow the official guide. All right, let's see. Standalone, Nix OS, not module. Home manager, Nix OS. I think we'll do this after our install, unless it has to be done prior to install. Yeah, I don't see anything where I'm like, okay. 
Most of it I think we can do after the fact and switch and add home manager and then utilizing it. It looks like we could just do a rebuild. Yeah, we'll just add it after install. I don't want to complicate our install too much. So I think we'll just do it after the fact. Um, did we get the OS though? That was the that's the question I have. Uh da 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 Nix OS distribution. Oh, we did. All right, we got Nix OS minimal. Let's go downloads. Nix OS minimal. We'll toss this. Oh, actually, let's just copy it. Toss this into images. Perfect. And then we also want to toss it into a Vin toy. Do I have an old Nix OS in here? Yeah, so my last minimal install was 22. This one is 23. Yeah, so 23.11, perfect. Let's get it. Let's close tabs and let's move to old Nix and get this get the show rolling. Get the GUI installer, don't waste your time. I mean, the GUI installer would be a lot better here, but I don't know. I don't want to install more packages than I need. And all the GUI installers had was GNOME and Plasma. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to mess with that. Do I? And it is on the wrong monitor. One second. I broke it. Hmm. Computer? Yeah, one second. We'll try that again. Should be seeing something. Hmm. Well, that did not work quite the way I wanted it to, so uh, let's just see. Yeah. Let's just unplug that, maybe. Does that work? Come on. Come on, baby. You got it. Still nothing, huh? Wait. All right that maybe oh, I blame this stupid fire legend monitor it's what I give for going cheap on Amazon I mean I broke it without even getting to the install of the system that's kind of impressive um, well the, no work does that work no uh all right one second what hmm. why does this i gotta get rid of this stupid monitor this damn monitor causing me problems yeah. anything uh you know linus needs all the help he can get gotta have these moments well, so I have this 120 hertz cheapo monitor as my main primary that has 1080p that I'd use, but uh, no signal. Okay, well. <sighs> it works once it boots into Windows. So. Yeah, this is what happens when I go cheap. Well, I mirror the output, so I have one that goes into a capture card that you all see, and then the other one comes off of it and goes into this monitor here, right? Should work in a good, good, in a good setup, but the higher refresh rate can cause all kinds of problems with mirroring, so it sometimes just bombs out, and then we're left with a black screen. Yeah, I need goat. I you think I would learn to stop buying cheap stuff. Oh, you know what? I don't think I've ever tried that. Let's see. Is there a display? Let's see. It has overdrive, free sync, OSD, mute, gaming, blah blah blah. Refresh rate number. That that sounds that sounds interesting. Let's try that. Refresh rate num. I don't know, it's just on and off. You think it would actually be a number. 
It does seem like it's from China, so... Yeah, we'll see. Um, anything else here? One second. ACM, blue light, super sharp. Nope, nope. Right now, it does downclock this to there. HDMI black levels, DDC-CI, wide mode full, auto source off. So it shows 60. Let's give it a reboot and see what happens. Yeah, so these cheapo Amazon monitors sound like a good deal. You get a higher refresh rate, but sometimes it doesn't jive with things. So I got mine sitting up in the upper right-hand corner. You guys can't see it, but right now it's set at 60 in Windows, which sounds like you should be like 120, but let's see. So here's this guy. Let's go to an advanced setting. You can see it's set at 60, but it goes up to like 144, and 144 does work. Ah, well, it works for me, but not for you. All right, let's try 120. That's divisible by 60, so maybe that'll work. Okay, interesting. So we can 144 hertz can't be mirrored. 120 hertz can be mirrored by that uh, splitter. I mean, honestly, for the next one, this sounds like complete, completely dirty, but I almost want to just go with a 1080 60 hertz monitor and then just be done with this whole deal. <laughs> but to use a 1080 60 hertz monitor in 2023, that kind of hurts. But I wouldn't have any display issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little bit dirty just just mentioning that but uh yeah that's what's happening guys so it's not showing the screen because it's going to 144 hertz at 1080 and the mirroring just can't pick it up I mean I can get away with 120 hertz right here in windows and still mirror it to you guys at 60 hertz but if I go up to 144, it'll just cut out the signal altogether. Do you know how many of us are still using 1080p60? And man, that's a good question. I, I'm kind of curious. Well, let's, let's check. I kind of want to know out of everyone watching this, what you're feeling. I'm at one second. Let me, let me create a poll. We'll do straw poll probably. Ah, uh, straw poll. Still, all right, straw poll. Let's create a poll. How many of you use 1080p slash 60? Can't type today. 60 hertz. I do. I'm above that. All right, let's see. Um, I am above that is what I'm going to vote. <laughs> Let's see what everyone says. Oh, I need to give you guys the link. That would help. That would also help, huh? You forgot the I'm below that. I'm sorry. That's funny. You you can just say I, I maybe I should have just been like peasant status. 1080p 60 hertz or below. You are a peasant. And then I should put it on the green. <laughs> elite status anything above that let's see what everyone in the audience says here all right we're at a little over 50 votes i mean honestly about a 60 40 split 40 percent of the audience i mean I, that's pretty darn high i lot of, i thought more people would be using like a 1440p monitor at 60 or maybe a a 1440 at 144 or a 1080 at 144 like what i'm doing right here is a 1080 at 144 uh but a 1080 at 60 and below that seems pretty old to me yeah it's kind of close i mean that's a lot closer than i thought it was so that tells me a lot of people are still rocking 1080 at 60 <laughs> 1080 at 50 hertz yeah now, what is it? Uh, 50 hertz is overseas. Non-US users, I believe, are 50 hertz. 
because that's uh I, I always forget which one is us is it ntsc or is it pal i can't ever remember which runs at 50 hertz i i should know that from just camera work but i don't that's pal okay that's what i thought pal's 50 hertz which is even worse Whew. <laughs> king root i use 720 at 30 <laughs> Oh, Lord. Okay. Well, I think that's about what the votes we're going to get for today on this. 56% of you say you are above a 1080 60 hertz. 44% say you are a 1080p or 60 hertz peasant user. <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty hilarious. Uh, but it's not that surprising, actually, now I think about it, because I still have many spots where I'll use like a 1080 60 and, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just old and I don't really care about the refresh that much. You think as you get older, you'd, you'd care more about refresh because lower refreshes put more strain on the eyes, which leads to fatigue. I, I mean, it makes sense. And I honestly do think 144 Hertz, I'd much rather be at 1080 P 144 than to be at 1440 at 60. Uh, to give given the options, I'd much rather have less real estate with a higher refresh, uh, which is kind of wild. I do notice a difference. Having said that, I've been rocking 60 hertz and I didn't know it the whole time I've been out here. So take that with a grain of salt. All right. So now we know the problem is this monitor is unable to be mirrored because of the refresh rate. <sighs> because I swapped it out. So what would be the best solution here? Probably. I wonder if I could lock the refresh rate. All right. I feel like that's the way to go. Or you know what? I could just put it on the widescreen monitor. <sighs> That's what I'm going to do, because I think this is a 60 hertz. Uh, the It'll be a little stretch during the setup, but that'll be fine. Your Nix OS is flawed. I ran it and got a black screen. Okay. Just go headless. Uh, we're going to... I like to do it on raw hardware. All right. Um, just uh, take that. Yes, got it. Let's, a second here. Huh? Huh? All right, now we should have, uh, yeah, perfection. Uh, who needs 1080 when you got 1024? Yeah, buddy, let's do it. Glorious. Uh, let's go reboot. It's a little weird. It stretched, stretched this out, but at least we'll be able to do our install. <laughs> Four by three, you know? I, there's something charming about a you know the four by three i don't mind it if you're just doing like business work four by three is honestly just fine yeah let's i can't use my own hardware config because it's changed since then so we'll uh we'll change that up too um slight problem this didn't work <sighs> hell's bells all right one second what can I do to fix this? All right, let's try to go out. Let's see if I have another one. Just this guy, a bigger one. This guy's. Let's get this guy. Out of his reach. One second. I'm just uh, gonna reconfigure a few things here. I'm gonna go here with this guy out, come into here. This is that one. Let's go one. And this output. We got anything? Nope. All right, well, from the right one, input, output here. And then this one here, still nothing. 
Ah, oh, gosh. Duct tape and bubble gum is what I live by. I think we should have established that by now. I'm too cheap to do anything else. Hmm. Well, let's just try and uh, change this up one more time. Nope. Could be that guy. If it's that. Nope. Well, let's see what else we can do here. Try this one. There. Still nothing there. This guy. Let's take this guy. All right, what about that? Anything? Nope, nothing there. All righty. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there we go. We got it. Wait, someone just wrote in chat. Apparently it's a knockoff A open monitor According to that select gaming selection, let it show you the current refresh rate in the same gaming section. You can play around with the settings like adaptive sync and overdrive. I'd set adaptive sync to off and that way you should be able to set overdrive to off. Okay. That, oh, dude, I think chat just fixed our problem in this, like every stream though, that chat fixes the problem. Now you guys know why I stream. So you can just fix all my problems. There's the gaming section. Precinct premium. Uh, let's go ahead and put that to off. All right. Precinct premium. All right. And uh, I think we got it fixed this time. Overdrive normal. Let's just go into here. Let's one more time. Extreme off off all right overdrive is off free string premium is off osd refresh rate uh i'm gonna i'm actually gonna take the refresh rate off okay input wake mode any adaptive sync is what i'm looking for next i don't see anything there black boost blue light acm off super sharp off all right, so it shouldn't have any extra special bells and whistles with this rebranded o uh, open monitor. So therefore, we should be able to restart, go into our BIOS, and we're good. <laughs> Chat is a free tech support channel. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No need to subscribe here. You can just simply give me free tech support. Oh man, I keep forgetting. What? Where is that? All right, let's try. Uh, let's try rebooting again. <laughs> this stream always stresses me out, and yet you keep coming back, monk. All right, there's our BIOS. Okay, I got it. Yay! All right, we're in business. Perfection. Let's go and do a boot menu and uh, what is that? F8. And we're going to go into our Ventoy. Oh, I need to, I need to revisit the C sharp. It's been a little bit unpunished. Probably need to take a break and do that. All right. We're going to go Nix OS normal. Yeah. We only have one Ram stick. <laughs> Are you really that surprised? I never sent that other one back. Yeah, I'm not a hardware guy. Never been. Never claimed to be one either. I just may have not have corrected some people. All right. Uh, let's see what we have. Uh, let's go set font. -ter. Do you think they have like... Oh, look at that. They got the built-in Terminus fonts. Sweet. Now, let's do a LSBLK. You'll notice I removed a bunch of drives, guys. 
We only have the Vintoy drive in there now. We have a spare 120 that's not being used. And then we just have our, our regular drives. It looks like my Linux partition is on the NVMe 01 or 0 in 1, where Windows is going to be on NVMe 1 in 1. Uh, we can see that by doing a BLK ID, uh, which should give me more than that. Well, maybe a pseudo BLK ID. Yes. From pseudo BLK ID, you should see ext4 and p3, p1 is a vfat, and then p2 is an ext4 as well. Uh, the UUIDs are going to need to be imported. And we also need to set up the mounts for this. So if we look at our current mount system, uh, let's go make file system.ext4. And which one is the home folder and which one is the other folder? Uh, P3 is going to be the home folder. So P2 is going to be the root folder. So make file system ext4. This is embarrassing, but I don't remember how to do MF. <laughs> I can't remember what was it. I think I just do make file system. Oh, I felt like there was an option there. Uh, you know, I don't always just blindly run make file system ext4, but when I do, YOLO. NVMe 01 or oh no, not E1, that would be Windows. 0 in P2. Sure. Hmm. I wonder if TLDR is here. Yeah, TLDR is not. Uh I've been using that a lot. Uh, what was the what was the option? Type. I gotta do type. That's what it was. Alright, let's go type. EX. Wait, when you go make file system ext4, file system type should be, yeah, n1p2? No, I don't think that's it. n1p2 is Microsoft. Well, that's an NTFS. Ah, oh, Nick Shell PL. Ah, oh, that's a good idea. Let's let's just go Nick Shell. Chat's trolling me. What's new? <laughs> Thanks, Smurf. <laughs> Uh, zero in one P one. Oh, I did get it right. Didn't I? I just fat fingered it. Uh, it, never mind. I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry. I was talking crap, but you guys were actually steering me right. It's in one P two. Uh, we also need to run that as pseudo. Uh, what, what is that? Uh, yeah. All right. It contains an existing file system. Sure. YOLO. Let's write that out. Perfect. And make file system fat. And for fat, what was it? Uh, uh, I think it's F count. So we would do dash F32 for the allocation tables. Oh, actually, it's actually capital F. 32 like that and that's gonna be dev nvme zero in one p1 like that that looks good to me pseudo all right so we wiped out arctix now we still i did not wipe out our home folder uh by by definition if we go like lsb okay we should have all of in NVMe zero in one set up now. So what it should look like is a mount and we'll do the mount process like so. We're gonna mount dev NVMe zero in one P2 into the MNT folder like this. Oh, geez, let's just switch to super user. I'm tired of writing, writing that. Uh, I even fat finger that, so it wouldn't even worked. Alrighty, the one dude. Thanks for the prime and leg. Much appreciated. Uh, hopefully you're getting entertainment out of this. 
I don't know if I'd particularly recommend you to blindly do MF <laughs> make file systems, but at the very least, it should be rather relatively entertaining. Uh, the P1 will go into our boot. Mount point doesn't exist. So we can do a make directory path MNT boot and then try that one more time. Now it works. And then the next one will be the home folder, which, you know, why we're, we were there, we probably should have done like a, uh, what is that? MNT home. So something like that. And then the next mount point would be MVME 0 N1 P3. And this is going to be our existing one with all our files. All our beautiful home files into home. Yeah. So now if we do it LSB OK, you should see all of those being utilized. And if we do like a LS MNT, you'll notice there's not much there, but an LS of the home should be like Titus uh, MNT home. You should see Titus there. And if we even drill down even further, there should be files in there with all of my stuff. Greatness. All right. So everything's set. We're almost ready for the next OS install, but we do need to capture the Git, which Git is not a command found. So what we're going to do is like a Nix shell and we're going to go like dash P and go Git. What this do, should grab the latest version of Git and let's do a Git clone HTTPS. If I was forward thinking, I would have already cloned this to like a drive somewhere, but you know, that didn't happen. Titus. And we need to put that in MNT ETC slash. Uh, let's look what that did. Forward slash MNT ETC. Let's see, we should have, oh, okay, that worked. Let's remove the readme. Let's do a vim of hard. Where? We need to fix these file systems right here. You can see they're kind of jacked. Uh, we wouldn't have a bootable system with this. We can leave those other ones down there. Let's grab and retrieve. Oh, probably the command. Let's do a bang cat and we're just gonna go straight up like blk id no such a uh, file or id oh i not a cat I'm such an idiot let's do a uh retrieve blk id yeah all right cool so from here let's see what we have uh ah. these lines for Let's go 8DD. Oh, actually 8K. Um, D8J. Oops, too too much. Let's do 6DJ. Yes. Uh, so we're really wanting these top lines right here just to isolate this down. And what we're looking for is the DD. So the first one we want to grab is our home UUID, which would be, ah, make sure you never do it by label or not by label, by device name. So do, never use a device dev, whatever. It would just end in disaster for you. Uh, so a good example, uh, volume groups are fine, I guess, but it's like the exception, not the rule. Let's yank to our quote. And I'm gonna put this over into device. Let's go here to here and we'll paste. And coming back over here, let's delete to there. We'll exit out of that insert mode. And we're gonna grab all of this UUID. So we're gonna yank to quotes come up oh uh, what is that all right let's just insert that guy 
Still, you know, still getting used to the old keyboard. Uh, keep looking down. Getting there, though. Uh, so I could have just peed that. Okay. X. All righty. So that's our home folder. Our boot folder should be different as well. The boot's going to be the N1 P1. So coming down here, very simple fix. Yank two quotes. And we're just going to go back up to here. Come on over. We're going to visual mode to here. Paste. That fixes our UUID here. And then finally, the last UUID is going to be the root, which is going to be P2, which is this longer UUID. So let's go yank to quotes, come up to our final one, which is the root of the drive. Visual mode to here and paste. All right. Did I screw anything up, guys? Let's see. I'm reading chat. Can't you have the generate the hardware config for you? Yes, David, you sure can. But I kind of wanted to go the manual way without the configuration because I do have a whole bunch of like NFS mounts. I have a variety of other kind of hardware configs I like personal configurations on. So I manually formatted the drives. I manually added these things in just so I could kind of do it this way so this is the full manual way of doing things is is this set up as like a tutorial absolutely not would i recommend anybody else do it this way no don't do it this way you're going to screw something up and it's going to be heartache for you and if you do decide to go this route make sure you back up your data even though i didn't <laughs> uh so that's why i i do it this way is more for for this type of uh setup all right so now we have all of our hardware config done our nix config done uh we have all of our programs from my git drive everything uh so we're only like you know honestly if i wasn't messing around with like my mirroring and all that other stuff this probably would take you about five minutes the whole beauty of nix os is it should be able to replicate everything you see in a push of a button but yeah we should put a big disclaimer here guys this stream is meant for entertainment purposes only you may learn something during it but chances are if you don't know what i'm doing and you're trying to follow along step by step man i feel bad for you because I let you left you down a very, very dark, dark pathway with pitfalls everywhere. <laughs> uh, all right, let's try Nix OS dash install. Oh, my bad. Let's uh, move star to nix uh, oh let's go nix os move star to nix os say what oh i must have hit it twice maybe anywho that should work now all right now make the magic happen nix copy my dwm config install all my programs or just error out on me. That's cool too, I guess. Shoot. Ah. So line 320 and line 85 has problems. Uh, config checked, remove attribute config module. Yeah, it's just a config only file, so no problem. So let's just go down to line 85. This is in here twice. Yep. Uh, let's take a look at line 320 as well. And line 320. Uh, I think it was just the that one being in there twice. Okay. All right. Second time's the charm. Okay. Uh, what happened here? <sighs> well, 
Okay, specify which portal backend to use for the requested interface. You simply want to keep the behavior of 1.17. Apparently there's some kind of update. Uh, go XDG portal config common default star. Okay. There apparently was an update with XDG portal. <coughs> Let's, uh, it's simple. It's, it's simple stuff. I mean, everyone knows this. Yeah. We're just going to come into here. Uh, let's take a look at our XDG portal. We're just going to go XDG dash portal, you know, or XDG. Yeah, let's just keep going. Uh, XDG. All right, XDG portal. And from here, we need to uh, modify this uh, hair. Uh, we'll just go common dot, common dot. Come on, Chris, recall it. You just saw it. It was xdg portal dot common dot defaults. Was it plural or one? I don't remember. Default equals equals a star and that. Okay. Perfect. Uh, GitHub DWM Titus not found. You need to clone the DWM Titus GitHub into that directory. This is what you need, SM. All right, let's... Uh, I think that was the error problem. So, let's try NixOS install again. Oh. XDG common does not exist. Can anybody... Uh, Rewind the tape for me and let me know what that error message was because God bless it. I forgot what the hell the value was I needed to update. I probably should have screenshotted that. Was it a semicolon? I think I did did a semicolon, didn't I? Let's take a look. Let's go. Was it 320? Uh, where are you at? XDG common dot default. Uh, I guess we can... Let's just comment it out. I know we're close. Let's just comment this out. We'll run it again. Where did I miss it? What was it? Oh, it's... Com XDG portal dot config dot comma dot default equals star. Idiot. Oh, I can't believe I missed that. All right. Uh, let's go XDG portal. No, uh, was it not? XD, I thought that was XDG. XDG. Let's go next. Ah, it's common. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, this should be uh, one more over. You know, one of these days. I was really close, actually. It was config.common.default equals star. We should have legacy support now. We should just go install. And... The option font, fonts dot fonts defined and has been renamed to fonts dot packages. All right, so there's another update that was happened. Instead of fonts dot fonts, it needs fonts dot packages. All right, so they modified our configuration. Let's just go fonts dot fonts. Uh, it's not going to find that pattern because it needs a fonts backslash dot fonts. Uh, well, whatever. All right, uh, let's just, let's just go fonts. All right, fine. Ah, fonts equals fonts, blah, blah, blah. So it's fonts, and these should be now. Delete that. This should now be packages in the latest version. Since last version I did, they changed this configuration, it looks like. I don't know, I'm guessing. But that's my takeaway from that. Nixdosh install. All right. The next error we are getting is an error calling the head built in. I hate it when I get the errors calling the head built in. All right. All righty. Uh, I'm using DWM Robin for this. I've been a big DWM user lately. Uh, what are we having? Inherent defs final head values 
error getting status of GitHub. Ah, yes. This build out of that probably. Oh, I think I was installing it as a shell user too. Anyways, MNT git home Titus. Was it GitHub? Oh, GitHub's all lowercase. My bad. And then if we look at that GitHub DWM, GitHub DWM, git pull. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes perfect sense. Okay. So what we're going to do is CD over into MNC home Titus. We're going to move GitHub. Oh, no, no. That's my bad. It should be a vim of MNT etc nix os config. And where you see GitHub. I fixed this the last, within like the last six months. GitHub is the folder. So now with that, it should see the folder on the nix os install. All right. Seventh time the ch is the charm. How, oh, but since we're running this as the path for the install under MNT instead of that, don't I need to do like a ch root kind of thing for Nix? I feel like, uh, feel like I'm missing something here on the Nix OS install. I guess I could pull up elinks and take a look. I guess I could just copy it to that. I just think there's something I'm missing for the path on the install, though. Hmm. Yeah, rm-rf forward slash asterisk would fix the problem, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, there's no system to ch root into. That's right. Yeah, for building DWM would be easier. What we could do is just comment it out boot into it and then from the CLI uncommented it and then let it rebuild. I think that's what we'll do. Let's just get the CLI working. That makes the most sense than having to change it twice. I probably need to do a uh, uh, update to this anyways, GitHub. So for the overlays packages, now if you want to comment out multiple lines, yeah, you know what? I think we can just come at this one line out and it'll be fine. All right, let's try it. Eighth time trying this install. Okay. Uh, now we're getting our packages export. Nix packages pkgs underscore allow insecure equals one. Okay. Now, when I do the rebuild, honestly, I could just add that in. Uh, I think I did add this in at one point in time, but I think it, uh, on the update, it, it kind of, that insecure package is just different now. Anywho, let's just get it going. All right, ninth time's the charm. It does feel like we're getting further along now. Yeah, I don't think I need Python 2 anymore. I need to look back at uh, what insecure packages I was allowing through my configuration. I think this should work just fine, though. <laughs> I blame you, Monk. Gosh. It does seem like there's a system that's getting installed here. And it does seem like it's grabbing all my packages. Because this, this should be every package I use on every install I do of Linux which is dev tools for building uh, a whole variety of like my terminal browser of choice, everything. So this is going to download, replicate my system exactly how I want it. The only thing that's not going to have uh, on initial load is my DWM because I need to boot into the system first and be there. So I don't want to change the directory for the build. If I actually ran from like a binary package and didn't build it from scratch, obviously this would work great. It does seem like it is downloading a lot of packages very, very fast. 
because you got to remember like the browser alone's a couple hundred megs and we're we're downloading the entire system the render everything bootloaders the whole bit uh the xdg portal man there's so much that it's doing right now that it's just kind of insane bash completion i would say it's definitely doing it in parallel uh just by the speed of it there's no way this is not parallel so already pretty high highly optimized uh the thing that drives me crazy about arch is the stock install of arch whatever reason pac-man is not under parallel downloads they made the option in pacman.com but it's not there the other thing that drives me crazy about arch is when it goes to build packages the make packages are literally using like one thread or one core by default like why isn't the stock setting just reading the cores that are available and then utilizing all of them there's so many like crazy stupid settings in many of your mainline Linux distros that just drive me crazy. Ah, crap. It's downloading all of DaVinci Resolve. Ah, shoot. I should have left that one off. My bad. All right. So we ran into a problem under dependencies of derivation. Der derivation. Is that a word? What the hell is that? Derivative? Deriv derivation. I don't know. I, I think they meant derivatives. Dependency of derivat derivatives of flurp and system dash path and Nix OS system. Do you think this worked? I'm gonna say no. Derivation. Okay, well. The action of obtaining something from a source or origin. Okay, cool. Good to know. <laughs> I failed English class, but here I am, 40 year old, improper English. But I learned a word today, yay. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, I think I kind of want to run this again, but this time I want to look at, okay, there's that Python, which, oh, anyways, let's take a peek at the packages again yeah there's davinci resolve let's kill davinci resolve and dwm is probably not needed either since we're building it from scratch i think that's fine is bspwm in there too uh bspwm is in there too let's kill it too a lot of packages in here though all right let's uh save this out Let's try another install. See what we get. So you say you spoke six languages, English, Spanish, C, COBOL, assembly, and... <laughs> Do you really need to use Elinks? Uh, probably not. I had W3M in there as well. W3M is another terminal-based browser that works just like Elinks. I actually like W3M's defaults better than Elinks. Makes more sense to me. Okay. Hmm. So florp not installed system.path and system nixos system studio failed to build. Well, it looks like just a driver. Let's reboot and I guess see. And maybe florp's the issue too. I don't know. I don't think this is going to boot, but maybe let's give it a whirl. Yeah, I doubt this would just work. Yeah, so right now we did not get a bootloader installed, so it did not finish installing. I thought that was going to be the uh, what I saw, but I just wanted to verify. Let's remove Florp and look at our package base again. All right. Let's set our font to tur for terminus v32 in all righty next up let's uh go i'm just gonna go right into root and we're just not gonna waste any time uh blk actually we can just do lsblk 
let's do amount dev nvme zero in one p2 that's going to be the root drive and that's going to go into mnt next is going to be dev nvme zero in one p1 that's going to be mnt boot and then finally our home uh, partition which is going to be mvme zero in one p3 and that's going to go into home just like that now we have if we go lsb okay all of them partitioned off like that now let's go ahead and kill floor also i want to kind of get rid of versioning uh the, the version numbers in our config i think we can go with the generic and get away with that uh let's go florp we'll just get florp later it's fine uh coming down i think at the very bottom we specify the version system state so here's the channel and here's this the value determines a release which defaults the setting of state value like locations databases blah 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 before changing this value read the documentation for this option did you read the comment yeah let's just change this readings overrated we're gonna just change this over to uh, 24.05 let's uh, change that <laughs> replace that with uh, that version I think that's fine all right <clears throat> Nix OS dash install and away we go <clears throat> what do you guys think What's the over under of this working? <laughs> uh, oh, we could fix Python too. Uh, let's go 2718.7. Let's fix that. Uh, 2718.7. We're going to come back here, replace that with a dot seven. All right. And off once again. All right, we are cooking with gas. This time around, we are changing things. We do have a root password prompt. All right, easy. Installation finished. Why can't everyone do this? I mean, this is easier than installing Windows. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, let's see what we got. Do you think it? Re I think it's gonna work, guys. I got a good feeling. Oh, look at that beautiful Linux boot manager. Oh, that that is uh, looking very promising. Skill issue. Just need to level up a little bit. That's okay. That's what we're here for. Yeah, let's let's push this to a working commit. Uh, <laughs> that's probably a good idea. Uh, doo -doo -doo. What is uh, the default? Uh, what's the default terminal command? I don't remember. Uh, let's go Control Alt Control Alt F two. Whatever. We're just gonna go directly to TTY. What was my login? Let's try root. Ah, there we go. All right. Now let's vim into our etc nix os configuration. Now we need to fix our dwm. Where is that? Was it up here? Did I pass it? I passed it. So this overlay rebuilds dwm for us and that is what we need so now if we go nix os dash rebuild this should oh crap that's not it uh it is rebuild space build if i remember oh nix rebuild switch that's it thank you monk uh, Alrighty. <laughs> 
You know, the funny thing is, I, I probably should go back and watch my original video on this because I don't remember a whole bunch. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, honestly, if someone gets access to my physical PC, that's uh, I got bigger things to worry about than whether or not they can guess my password or not. All right, here comes the DWM rebuild. And this should be my flavor of DWM. Um, what about floor? Uh, Florp. I didn't I didn't see that come through. Oh I think we probably was there other packages for Florp? Well we could flat pack it. I kinda wanna build it though. Snap and banned. <laughs> uh those are just warning collisions. Those are just a slight bump. Those are suggestions. Uh, da, da, da. a patch hunk failed. It's not that important. At least I don't think. All right, Florp. Let's toss it in. See what we get. Now, maybe the Florp package was something different. There might be like a stable, unsecure one. We could do like a W3M... Google.com. Chase, thanks for the tier one. All right. So from our here, let's look at uh, Nick's packages. Nick's OS search packages. Yeah, that's fine. Um, actually, let's go here. All right. Nick's OS search. Oh, it does exist. Okay. It's called floor. Okay. So I got it right. All right, cool. Let's uh, do a switch rebuild. Well, there's Florp dash unwrapped. I want to say that's the, is that the unstable version? And I think Florp's the stable version if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, unwrapped is marked out of date. Okay, that's what I thought. So the stable version should be fine. Oh no, that is stable. Well, let's see what happens here. Oh, okay. That uh, answers that question. Uh, let's go unwrapped. Always feels better when it's unwrapped anyways. All right. Unwrapped. There we go. Switch rebuild. Perfect. Let's see if this version it likes or not. Uh-oh. All right. So it keeps failing at the toolkit jar.mn file. I don't know. I mean, again, we could switch over to flat pack. That wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, I think we're missing a dependency that uh, Florp wants. Nix OS is fine. Uh, this is mainly just tracking down because you got to remember, guys, this isn't a stock install. This is my old one with every single package I use, meaning this already has GIMP. This already has, uh, in theory, a web browser. If I didn't recently change to a web browser. It has literally everything. Distro box. Okay. Yeah, it could be. I think it's probably part of the builder. I bet Monk comes back and says that uh, it's it's probably an out of date build of Florp itself. Yeah, and I could try to patch it myself, but ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, a browser's pretty complex. I mean, it's fixed in 11.7.1, but Nix is using 11.61. We could also grab uh, the latest version, do a rebuild of it ourselves, too. We could do a git clone and then build it with our DWM if we wanted. Let's just do stock Firefox for now. Not the end of the world. Uh, ooh. What about Firefox ESR? I don't necessarily like the stock Firefox. Let's go. Uh, I'm just going to shoot in the dark here. Uh, let's do an ESR. What do you guys feel like? Do you feel like that's okay? If not, too bad. We're going to do ESR. Let's see if it knows what ESR is. I think so. Alrighty. Alright, cool. Let's uh, reboot. 
and now we should have our browser our configuration the window manager should be the dwm uh Microsoft Edge. I see you. Mm-hmm. All righty. Oh, yeah. Glorious. Beautiful. All right, great. Uh, we are on a Nix system now. Everything looks to be working gravy. Uh, we do need to check. Does Firefox launch? Probably, I would imagine. But let's check old Firefox. Nice. Uh, let's see if we can grab Florp, huh? Let's see what the Florp issue is. Florp Nix OS. Auto jump script not found. I think that has to do with the shell setup on Nix OS. I've always had that error. I think even when I was maining Nix OS for a bit. And I feel like that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but everything else is there. Like... Look, we're ready. Like, let's say I wanted to launch GitHub Desktop. Kitty, it's already there. Everything's already there that I, I've used. So I can just pull up, like, shoot, let's just go to here. And I, I think all my gaming dependencies are already there. Let's go Steam. All right, Steam. And then Steam should just update and launch. Let's, let's just check. Will this work? Yes, yes, it will. Because NixOS freaking rules, man. We would have sat here for like hours reloading all my garbage. But instead, you just launch it. And all my home folders all right there too. Like all my cache is still sitting there. Everything just, everything just works. As the great Todd Howard would say. It just works. <laughs> Uh, dude, I don't even need to log back into Steam. Cash, it's got me. She's gonna log me right in. Maybe, probably. We even got a we even got a sun flare, and it loads super fast. <laughs> Lord knows what it's doing in the background. Uh, it it's got to reconfigure all those data files in the background. Any second now. Any second. So fast, you don't even know what to do with yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's the initial load. So what's happening right now is it's reloading the entire database of games. It's pulling in all my existing installed games and doing updates and downloading all the artwork grabbing all the cache files. So I'm kind of joking here, but let's let it coal up, figure out exactly what's going on, and then close it and relaunch. And I bet you it will it will go a lot faster. Yeah. It, but it, I mean, the fact this just loaded right in is kind of amazing, right? I love it. Uh, so we have this. Let's see. It's downloading. Retry sync, up to date. Let's update this. See what we got for updates. And let's see what our speeds get up to here. 22 megabits per second, 20. That's uh, pretty abysmal actually. Let's see. I think it's still downloading a bunch of stuff in the background as well. We got the Proton updates. We have just a bunch of different stuff here. <laughs> yeah, megabits per second is kind of cheating, isn't it? We can switch it. Eh, it doesn't really matter, though. Just divide it by eight. Gosh. Lazy. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, I think right now it's still building that cache database in the background. Let's take a look at our HTOP, probably. Let's go over here. What's... Uh... Oh, we don't have H top, bash top, B top. Ah, can we do like a shell dash P bash top? Maybe it's B top. Perfect. B top. <laughs> yeah, we could just do top, but it's not as pretty. I mean, it doesn't get any prettier than this. 
My system is running like a giant pile of turds right now. I will say that much. <laughs> oh, my word. Okay. What do we got going on? Utilization. About 5, 10%. Nothing too much there. What about network? Right now, about 100 megabytes per second. Yeah. Or no. 22. Okay. System slow. I think a lot of it is could be permissions issues. It could be rebuilding cache files. There's a lot of stuff. I, I think it'll iron itself out though. Was it? Let's let's see. What do we got? Ah, eh, that's fine. Floor, blah blah blah. Do we have anything? Build florp. Ah, yeah, there it is. Yep. There's our problem. So I think we just need to get the latest version of Florp, which should be a different package. Can we call up the latest packages or specify a specific version to grab? So how do we get the 11.7.1? Well, this is a good one. Uh, sudo nick store dash dash GC. Okay. And we also need home manager as well. Whew. All right. Let's take a peek. Let's go the Nick store dash GC, see what that does. Let's cool it up. Uh, let's go sudo Nix dash store dash dash GC. Uh, let's use our super secret password. Well, what did I make my password? Uh, all right. Uh, I think uh, what we'll do here now try it. we'll just change that I never made one <laughs> Thank, thanks for reminding me what my password is <laughs> killer I forgot uh, okay so this is the GC we pulled down that what did that do oh that's garbage collector that deletes the, the system cache so now we should be able to refresh or rebuild. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's a lot. That's 12 gigs that were freed right there. That's kind of insane. I think a lot of that was DaVinci Resolve, to be honest with you, though. Yeah. Uh, How's our steam working over here? Clear all that out. That looks good. Let's see what this is looking like now. Okay. Let's grab, uh, it's about two gigs in Starfield. Let's bench this out and see how fast. Two gigs in Starfield should only take about 30 seconds with my my regular configuration. If we were doing it in Windows, that's about what we'd see. Thanks, Ashlyn, for uh, gifting Faye the one month. <laughs> so now, uh, once this finishes which was finalizing right now and should move into our completed down here any second now any minute there we go so let's do a two gig update now that i feel like the system's somewhat settled in we've updated our cache steam's pretty much gone through it should have reworked most of our home library to where we have all my recent stuff any of those updates let's come back to our downloads let's see what we should be getting we should be getting close to a one gigabit per second speed and this should take roughly a minute to transfer so let's see what we're getting up to if it hangs out at like 20 megabits per second or something there's some shenanigans going on with the network transfer yeah you should be watching right here if you are getting video pixelation on Twitch, I do have a high, high def version I record locally of this and upload to Titus Tech Talk later. But, uh, all right, here we go. Now we got the update and the download. We're at 200, 300 megabits, 400 megabits per second, 500, 600. We got a little more? Come on, give me, give me 700. I guess they're only going to give me 600. 
Maybe it's about time I upgrade my cat cable going into the house because that's where it's transferring from. Wait, wait, 695, 735, 772. I just didn't give it enough time. 800. Give me all the speed. 860, 880, 895, 900, 901. I will take that any day of the week. It's uh, downloading actually. 90 gig uh that's a that's a relatively large download okay <laughs> did you kick the cable or something you you you'd think something like that was set up by me I, I just i just grabbed the duct tape and twisted it a little bit and it really supercharged it <laughs> nix os confirmed gaming distro <laughs> oh man Man, oh, 16 megabit? Ugh. What are you on, like, 10, 100 fast Ethernet? Man, I remember those switches. Maybe, maybe you got, like, a dumb hub. Yeah, I don't know if how many network people from the 90s remember hubs. They'd have all these collisions, and you'd get, like, 1 to 2 megabit transfer rates. Ugh. Those were the days. Back in my day. Oh, jeez. Well, that is looking mighty fine. Um, I guess we could try to launch a game and see what that looks like. Everything else here looks good. I did want to try the Florp one more time. We did clear out the garbage collector and the system cache. But I think you could cherry pick the local changes. Let's see. Fetch origin. Add a working tree. I don't think this is pushed live yet. Because right now it's doing a get cherry pick of this commit. Ah, so they haven't released it for 2405 yet, uh, backported this. So it's just going to install the same 11.6 floor that has the, the build error. So I think we're going to have to wait on this one. Oh, some of us remember 10 base T. Oof. Yeah, Gen 2, I wouldn't mind doing a Gen 2 stream, but I need a lot faster PC. A little six core for those compiles would take forever. Yeah, it'd be like, uh, what's the meta on Twitch where people s sleep and then you watch people sleep? Weird. Uh, but yeah, it'd be like that. I'd be like, okay, it's to the kernel compile. This is going to take about two hours. Let me take a little nap. I'll see you guys in two hours. Uh, it just, that's the thing about Gen 2 streams is people, I think, want to just see you struggle, which, dude, I'm totally cool with struggling on stream, but most of the Gen 2 streams in practicality it's just sitting there watching a compile happen god forbid you screwed something up after a, like a two hour compile and then like error you're like well okay i guess uh back to the drawing board here comes another two hour compile so that's the truth of Gen 2 streams Gen 2 is not really that difficult it's well documented you can do a Gen 2 install uh in relative ease it's not as complex as most people make it out to be. But yeah, if I had like a Threadripper or something with like a crap ton of com cores, like something with at least like 32 cores, high speed, I could probably compile the Linux kernel in just, you know, five to 10 minutes. And that would be doable on stream. I just need a lot better, uh, a lot better, you know, processor to really make it work. <laughs> Kind of same goes for LFS too. We'd still run into the same issues with LFS, if not more so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just don't think LFS or Gen 2 would be very entertaining. It'd be entertaining to start with, but then pretty soon after about five minutes of that, you'd be like, oh, okay, well, he's to a compile and this is getting very, very boring. Yeah, and that's the thing. As much as I crap on Gen 2, they have a fantastic wiki. There's a lot of really good, uh, you know, follow along guides so i think honestly anybody could install gentoo uh given how good the wiki is man look, look, look at that though that's a pretty steady steady climb i like it uh i don't know if it's uh, configured to increase network bandwidth i do notice the network bandwidth is pretty solid pretty pretty consistent so i don't have any complaints here we are already 40 gigs into this game download and we just started a couple minutes ago so that's not bad at all yeah arch wiki's the goat for sure 
Nix OS is not bad uh, as far as some of the documentation. It does do a better job than most distros. Gentoo's documentation, its wiki is very, very strong, like I just said. So all those things are good. Yeah, and I think a lot of people miss on that too. Like when I, like some people are not Arch people, but they'll still be using the Arch wiki. Yeah, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but really the only difference between a lot of Linux distributions is just the package manager. So where it says use the AUR or use Pacman, you just use apt with the, you know, the comparable package. Sometimes the package name changes, sometimes not. And everything else in the Arch wiki is can be used on like a Debian system. There's so much in the Arch wiki that is applicable to every single Linux distro out there. A lot of people don't realize that. So you can not be an Arch user and still use the Arch wiki. I do it all the time, <laughs> as we've seen. Oh no, we got some Discord Discord server problems. Oh, I'll have to jump in the other room and do it. Check it out. Let's uh, let's launch into a game. I'm gonna try. I think age, ages went through. I have been doing a lot of streaming of ages. Let's see if a basic uh, run of this game. What's that look like? Crash. Let's try it again. Crash. Hmm. Sad face. Let's look at our permissions in our home folder. Let's go ls. Uh, let's do an ll actually. Ah. So this this is a problem. Let's go sudo su. Let's come back. You see how it says 1000? Since uh, you, you run into this every once in a while, if you ever reuse your home partition on different Linux installs, you run into these permission gotchas here and there. So the easiest way is to come back into the root folder. Uh, let's do an LL. You can see this is what we have. Let's do a chown titus uh, colon. You could also do titus titus, titus users, whatever group you want to assign to your home folder. I like to just do titus colon space and then the user. Uh, and let's do it recursively. So I think just an uppercase R. This goes through, changes the permissions for anything in the cache uh, that was assigned to the other distro. Uh, the thing. So now that we go in, we should be able to see, hey, is this a thousand for the UID or is this now proper? So let's exit uh, this and you can see just do like a PWD, an LL, and now you have proper permissions on everything. So that probably was causing some <laughs> errors over here. Let's see. Does this still immediately crash? It does. So let's exit and let's relaunch and go Steam. Wait, did that launch into Final Fantasy? Ah, no. Yeah, that launched into Final Fantasy. Okay, let's exit that. Well, good to know Final Fantasy launches. And does the ages still have problems launching? Yeah, it does. So that might, could be like a permissions issue down here. Ah, so it's trying to do mango HUD game mode run and that with the command. I think honestly, let's remove mango HUD and game mode. Let's close that. Let's relaunch. Might have had a dependency there. I don't think Mango HUD got installed by defaults. And if I'm right, we should see a little bit of a delay as it does the thing and then launches the game. There we go. Yeah, I didn't have Mango HUD or game mode. One of the two. And there we go, into the game. Beautiful. So that was just an actual Steam uh, update that I, I botched with some custom settings in here very cool and the rest of this should be solid i don't know what we'll do about flirt i guess we could wait for the 23.11 release right now we're on the 24.05 release but that's not been committed yet can you check if the tcp bbr is enabled let's say uh, yeah let's try that graph uh, we could also flat pack it if I uh, cared about that. 
Ooh, I don't have my synergy. Hmm. I need that. Uh, we also probably need to... Don't have the jump command. Don't have Zoxide install either. Ah, there's a couple things I changed with my workflow since I last used Nyx. Most things are here, though. What do we have here? So we did change a few things. Huh. So, yeah, Flurp's currently broken. But here, I'll just type in that, too, uh, for graph graphing. Uh, let's go sudo. Uh, sys ctl. What are we grabbing? Net IPv4 dot TCP congestion. Congestion control. It is set to cubic. If that helps you at all, graph. So it is not. We could set that into our configuration. So the beauty of this, what should it be set to, graph? By adding the following lines to system CTL file uh net core default q disk fq and then congestion control bbr ah okay so probably the best way to make those changes let's just go vim etc nix os configuration so here's our our file right now and if we look we should already have like a sys ctl let's see no, uh, no, we don't have any sysctl packages. Maybe a uh, net dot. We have any of that in here. There's networking dot firewall and networking dot enable IPv6. That's a change I've implemented. It'd probably be in these tweaks where we would change them. Well, yeah, you can do the attribute set kill top, but we want to put it in the actual rebuild command. So the beauty of Nix is everything's put into a configuration or .nix files. So let's say by default, I wanted graphs, you know, TCP BBR modifications, which does sound good. And I actually, let's, let's do it right now. Uh, you could do it through sysctl.nix. We could do a bunch of different uh, modifications of it. So, totally. Hey, how's it going, Peter? Uh, so, making those modifications, looking here. Let's just uh, TCP BBR NixOS. I bet someone's already done it. Mm, nope, nope. Let's see if we have a TCP... Enable BBR congestion control. There we go. So this changes the Q disk to FQ, just like you said. We have congestion control switching from cubic to BBR. And then we're adding the boot module TCP BBR as well, as that was also needed. Uh, so we take this. Uh, this looks to be going under our systemd boot enable, probably before packages. We also have some other options here. Oh, this is interesting. Increasing TCP size windows for higher bandwidth WAN connections, assuming 10 gigabit of internet with uh, over 200 mill milliseconds of latency as worst case. Well, I think I might just grab all these tweaks, guys. No hibernate. I'm going to grab that too. Well, he's using ZFS. Well, let's grab all these kernels with nets extra modules for being able to flip mirror on webcam i don't think i really need that module anything else i want to grab g photo too no that is super neat so we'll put this right by our networking and his if you look i think he put some of the networking in there but alas i don't see it all right but i like that i like that change we'll come over here just paste this. All right. Well, maybe, maybe not. Control V. There we go. Uh, do we have any other boot? Okay. Just looking for. I, I want to make sure I don't have any duplications. Use system D boot EFI bootloader. I commented those out. We do have boot over here, and we are using system D boot enabled. 
host name, NixOS Studio, network manager. So technically, how I did this is incorrect. Yes, it would probably work, but really how this should look is like this. Let's just come back. Let's make it look pretty. So we have this. I don't see any kernel monitors here. So we'll just go update and paste. And let's push that over. Oh, geez. The indent is weird on this one. I need to change these to tabs, two space tabs. Okay, with TCP BBR enabled, Lynx users can expect an improved overall web surfing experience and faster loading of web pages on their servers. Tests show significant speed improvements, increasing connection speeds, problem. Very cool. I did not know that. I, I have a gig connection here, so we probably will see uh, quite a bit of improvements. So we got boot kernel parameters there. Let's, uh, I like to kind of put them all into the same, uh, same thing here. So when people are changing, they don't have to copy each one. So the next one's going to be kernel sysctl. Let's just grab both these lines, um, right here. Heck, let's just grab all of this. Oh no, this is what I get for using a keyboard. The Vim gods are angry with me. <laughs> uh, let's just come down. All right. Let's go. And we're going to just yank all of this. Come back to our boot. So we got temp clean boot equals yes. Supported file systems loader. And that. Below that, was, we're going to make the changes. So we're going to go paste. And this is where we can go kernel CTL, I believe. And if I do this right. Let's see if I can get the syntax just how it should be. Something like this. And uh, let's go back. We're going to go with a curly brace. Just modifying the syntax a bit, cleaning it up. All right. Perfect. And then we have all of these guys, which looking at this, I don't think we need to do these quotes here. Maybe we do. I feel like I don't. Missing equals on CTL. Ah, good call. Good spot, Daff. Sorry, still fat fingering. I don't know why I'm having problems with my keyboard today. I was actually doing so well yesterday. So if we do... um. I think we actually we can just do this and substitute out actually yeah I think we can just do this number substitute uh, boot dot kernel dot uh, actually I think the dot since this uses regex it should actually be a backslash dot kernel backslash dot sysctl backslash dot and then a forward slash nothing g there we go all right i think that's pretty good now uh let's see if we have the close brace we do not uh but you know what i'm gonna do here We're just going to bring that up a bit. I'm going to leave all the documentation. Just since I've never done this tweak before, I'm sure it is a good tweak, but I want to see it kind of in action first. Uh, now with all that in, let's look at the original. The original kernel parameters are all right here. Oh, geez. What am I doing with the mouse? I swear I use windows for like a week or two and then just everything goes to crap yeah that just goes to show you all right uh boot whatever this is about to go bye bye anyways uh so we're gonna grab all of these and we'll just delete that and i think that's all i need let's uh see how this looks it may air out because of the quotes on this but we'll see I'm kind of curious so let's do a pseudo nix os dash 
rebuild and switch okay so it didn't like the config there i i thought that was right but i am missing uh semicolons it looks like ah so let's go up to our changes and yes no no my semicolons are there but I don't think we need these quotes. I think the quotes are causing problems. I think honestly it should be, I don't know if this would work. Well, let's just, let's just do a substitute backslash quote forward slash, um, forward slash G get rid of all the quotes that might fix it. Hmm. Although those numbers with the equals, with the spacing, I don't know. That seems a little jank. And the ending brace also needs a... Oh, well, that might have actually been it the whole time. Okay, good one. Thanks, Killtop. Uh, do I want to add those quotes back? I feel like this looks better, and I feel like this would be more of how it should look. So I'm going to go with it, and we're going to do another rebuild. Okay, so maybe doing the quote, not not worth it. Okay, so let's go undo. Oh, crap. Do I not have my... Oh, I don't have any of my Vim plugins. No! Uh, what does that look like? Let's grab a BBR congestion control. I don't know. You see nothing. I think I can just do kernel of parameters, no hibernate, kernel modules. All right. So we'll just grab these, substitute out, boot, backslash dot, with a forward slash, forward slash G, and we'll make it exactly like they have it. All right. Look good. Now let's do a rebuild. <laughs> nice video to show you how to do regular Vim. I, I you know, honestly, Peter, I, <laughs> I still love Vim uh, on that. I, I don't, I think I need to relaunch NeoVim as my user and then also link it to the root user as well. That should fix everything. So this should clean out the system cache as well. Uh, so it might take a little bit longer to re-download some of these things, but I think the system cache was using things from version 23, and we already pushed to the 24 repo as well. So this might actually be a pretty big system update, but we'll give it a reboot afterwards. I'll try that out, Peter. <laughs> Green and grumpy in the man page. Uh, love it. All right, let's give this a reboot and see where we're at today. Uh, reinstall of Nix OS. We wiped out Artix. Uh, need to probably do a push of this back to the Nix OS Titus. There's quite a bit of errors in my configuration file that we did remedy today. Uh, so that's good. Uh, I don't know what else there is. Oh, MPV. Okay. Call me some MPV. I also need to add synergy and some other things. Probably, probably need to look at this a little bit more. But in the interim, everything looks good. Still got to fix like auto jump script, add synergy, a few other little, you know, quality of life things for me to get into here to make this kind of my, um, my space. But uh, we do have our new, let's make sure our our network works that'd be terrible switching to that and having nothing wait did did it not give us a network okay seems slow huh interesting those uh changes we made do you think oh that's pretty fast okay that was made my cache page google let's go chris titus tech did this fix things I think I might need to sit on this a little bit longer. Uh, maybe, maybe that IPv6 change might have 
Because right now the internet's feeling slow as balls. Probably that IPv6 disable, like straight up disabling IPv6 is actually not recommended. Let's go here. Uh, where is V6? Uh, let's come over here. Let's go true. Thinking that disable mess things up. All right, let's try that again. I just don't feel like on reboot it shouldn't it shouldn't have that huge latency. The other reason why I kind of was like maybe it's IPv6 was because when I pinged Google, it was spitting back IPv6 addresses, and that tells me. It's doing probably tunneling and IPv6 tunneling sucks. Um, but especially if the, the module's disabled, it's going to cause all kinds of shenanigans with your networking. So let's uh, give it a reboot again. And then we're going to ping google.com. See what it res resolves to. I, honestly, I don't care if it's resolving to an IPv6 address, but I do care if it's at like a five millisecond. That seems a little excessive. But I, I, I still, like, Nix is still probably one of my favorite OSs, uh, especially Linux-wise, because we're just able to grab uh, all my customizations like that. I mean, obviously, I needed to update, and there were some other compatibilities from the old version to the new version, and uh, most of that's already worked through in this stream. But, I mean, it's still a hell of a lot better than installing a stock any other distro and then having to load every single one of my programs in. That still sucks. Yeah, that was it. There we go. That's what I'm feeling. It was the disable of IV6 that was causing problems. Uh, so now if we go into Firefox. Yeah, all right, cool. Let's just uh, restore the session. Let's go Google. Chris Titus. Tech, yeah, sure. Oh, that looking good. How's YouTube look? Beautiful. Let's grab uh, this. Nice. All right. That's great. I'm clearing out. I'm shutting it down. All right, guys. Well, I am going to go shut it, shut down for the day. I think this is a great configuration. Um, I really, really like this configuration. And yes, I know. I said I'm finishing. Let me finish. Let me finish the stream. <laughs> I'm coming in. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the kids want to go see a movie so uh you know we're we're gonna go uh we're gonna go finish a movie real fast after i beat my child i'm streaming <laughs> uh I hope you guys have a fantastic holidays, uh, and th hopefully this is fun. I, I love Nyx. I, just being able to replicate all this stuff, uh, every time I'm in it, I'm like, man, this is cool. Like, it was just so unique and awesome, and I just can't say enough good things about Nyx. It, it's amazing, and uh, I, I don't mind being back on it at all. So much fun. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'll leave it with that 8-bit. Children are the biggest pain in the butt that you cannot live without. <laughs> They're so great. I love my kids. So, all right, guys. Love you all. Happy holidays. And I'll see you all on Thursday. Oh, crap. Never mind. One second. Awkward into the stream. I forgot. Uh... Yeah, there we go. All right. Peace.